welcome. We're going to be taking, well, we've been dealing with sums and summations because we've been talking about the left endpoint approximation, the right endpoint approximation. And I just kind of wanted to go through a lecture where I break apart a little bit how they work uh, because I know that somehow or another this notation, first of all, students often find it very intimidating. It's not nearly as bad as that. Uh, but also maybe somehow you missed hearing about how it actually works and there are going to be some formulas we'll need. So I'll kind of also cover those here. So this is practice with summations and summation formulas. So here we go. I guess if there's already a title there, I realize in my notes I go a little overboard. You can see in the notes. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to look at the sum. And then on the bottom, so j is my dummy variable, okay? And this is going to equal, and let's go from 1 to 3. And the function of j that goes in there is just j itself. It's kind of like the function f of x equals x, okay? So how does this actually work? Well, because this is just j, I just replace it with parentheses, so I'm going to get this. And I'm going to start with 1. So the number down here is, has, is the first thing that goes in here. And then I'm going to keep on going until I hit 3. So I'm going to keep on going with each of the integers. So I go plus, and then the next integer is 2. And then the next integer is 3, but 3 is there, so I'm done. I stop. Okay, so that's how this one would work. Um, and then you can, of course, sum that up if you want, that that's actually 6. But you can see that I started putting things into this formula here, starting with j equals 1 and going up until j equals 3. Okay, so this is like I'm starting with j equals 1. This is j equals 1. This is j equals 2. And then the last one is j equals 3. So what is the more general form for this particular kind of summation? And it doesn't matter whether this is a j as long as it matches up, or k, or an i, as long as it matches up. That's the really key point. And so I'm, in fact, going to change the notation on you to emphasize that. I did that on purpose. It's not one of these things. Sometimes afterwards you jokingly say, oh, yeah, I did that on purpose. No, this time I actually did it on purpose, and I changed it just to emphasize to you that you could. And it wouldn't change how it works. Okay, so this is where now my dummy variable is k. It goes from 1, so it has to start at 1, and then end at n. of k is going to equal, and maybe I actually will even emphasize here, I'll make that n orange so that you can see that that's going to equal, so I'm going to, it's going to be a formula that's going to evolve that n, so I'm going to have that n here, and I'm going to have this n here, and so I'm going to have n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So this is a really useful summation formula to have. Uh, my first uh, uh, mathematics class in university was a proof-based calculus class, and they made us prove these, so um, that was fun. <laughs> Obviously, I liked it because I'm a mathematician now. Uh, I hope you, you enjoy these things, too, but I enjoyed actually having to prove it. It's kind of cool. Um, so then you have the sum from j equals 1. So let's look at this one for a moment. I want to start at 1. What happens if I start at 1 and I go to 5? I didn't need to make these color because if I just put this in, this is a 2. Okay, in this circumstance, I'm just putting in a constant. Well, what happens for each number 2, I end up having to do, so I go 1. But what do I have there? I just have a 2 there. Okay, so I actually have, I don't even need parentheses here. Let me get rid of that because I changed my mind about how I want to do that. So I have 2, this is for j equals 1. See, it doesn't affect it. Um, and then I'm going to keep on going, so I'm going to have 2 for j equals 2. I'm again going to have 2 for j equals 3. But I'm not done yet, I said I was going to go up to 5, so I'll keep going. And then I'm going to have 2 for j equals 4. 
and then I have two, but this is for j equals five, and so I'm done, right, because that was the top number. Okay, and so the general form here, you can see, uh, so if you, if you think about this, I have n copies of two, okay, so the general form where n is five, so I have five copies of two, you can kind of see that there. It's going to be, so if I take the sum from k equals 1, and then I emphasize, I'll put that in, that's like my orange, this n up there, that's the part that impacts me here, of some constant c, where c is a constant, okay? Then I'm going to get out c times n, right? That was like having five copies here, because there five was, you know, going from 1 to 5 gave me five copies. The same thing would happen with a more general c, is I would end up with, if there's an n up there, n copies. Okay. So now let's look at uh, another circumstance. Let's do the sum from j equals, and again, we're going to go from 1. This time we're going to go up to 4. It's good to keep on mixing it up to so you can kind of keep track of what's going on. And I have a j squared here. Okay. Um, this is a squared, so I have to start with 1 squared. So again, this is the term that comes from j equals 1. I keep going. And I go, okay, well, the next integer is 2, so I need a 2 squared because this is j squared. I replace the j with a 2. I keep on going with a 3 squared. I replace the j with a 3. And then I'm supposed to stop at 4, so that's going to be my last one, is to put in a 4 squared. So this is j equals 4. Okay. And then my general form for this is going to look like the sum from k equals 1. And then I like to put the n in orange so that I can emphasize that that's this n here of k squared. Okay. I'm just squaring what we call my dummy variable there. And then I'm going to get, oh my goodness, I've got a lot of stuff here. So I've got this, there's going to be something, and then this plus one. I'm just trying to reduce the number of times I'm pulling, switching colors. And then I divide this all by six. And then I've left a gap for an n here, an n here, an n here over six. So this is the general form from when I'm going to square my dummy variable. And then the last one that you'll need to know, so the general form for this one, I'm not going to go through an example of it, I feel like you've kind of gotten the point now, is going to be the sum from k equals 1, again to n, of k cubed, is going to equal, and then this is like the whole thing is going to be squared, divided by 2, this, plus 1, and they have an n here and an n here. Okay, so these are going to be some useful summations to have. So I kind of wanted to combine that in the next video, you're going to want to have these summations, although I'm also going to give them there. But I also kind of want to show you a little bit like, A, what's going on, what does this notation mean, and B, a little bit of why these make sense. And this one's the only one where you can really see why it makes sense. Um, and the other ones, you kind of want proof-based calculus class. Uh, you want to do a proof by induction usually. Uh, but, so I hope this will help as you go through, because I think sometimes the summation notation is like, what in the world is the professor talking about? Uh, so I hope that having seen me kind of work through a few times, you just start with the bottom number, plugging it into the formula up until you get to the top one. That's it. That's all you do. It's not that bad. So... I hope that was helpful, and then I'll see you in the next lecture.